One robot is cool. A thousand robots, though, is a revolution. It's all very well to bring in a robot here or there, maybe even everywhere. But to transform our economy, we need hundreds and hundreds of robots that are customized for different jobs, automated, deployed, coordinated. How are we going to do that? Omni Labs says it has the solution with the Omni Modular Robotics Platform, which customers can use to design their own robots from base to brain, as Omni Labs says, and then 3D print them in Silicon Valley. To learn more, we're chatting with CEO Tuk Vu. Welcome, Tuk. Hello, John. Very nice to be here. Hey, super happy to have you. Excited about this. Very cool stuff. Maybe let's start here. What is the Omni Modular Robotics Platform? Uh, it's a really unique and agile approach to robotics development. So we're building out this platform with four pillars. One pillar is you know, a set of ready to use uh, off the shelf robots. And then the second pillar is a very rich, comprehensive libraries of robotics components, uh, sort of like the building blocks that you can plug and play uh, on the robot. And then we tie them all together with our unique um, 3D printing approach uh, to manufacture these robots that allow us to operate almost like a software company. And so now we can go to great extent to customize our robot on the hardware side um, to build different functionalities uh, depending on the needs of the verticals or the market. Um, and then uh, we also have the software side that, you know, sort of like a library that people can program different applications on top of it. Um, and so, yeah, um, this is how we can really go to uh, different variation of robots in much shorter time and, and cost. So that sounds really cool because I might be a manufacturing company, maybe I'm a warehouse, logistics company, whatever. I might have some specific robotic needs, but zero ability to actually make the robots that would help me in my business. I can kind of come to you. I can use some web-based system to design it and you'll make it. I assume the entire robot isn't 3D printed. There's probably certain specific yeah. components that are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we use a high pitch approach, right? Um, you know, whatever the simple kind of off the shelves components that we can buy, we'll use them. You know, why not? Because they have been designed well. Uh, but there are intricate, complex pieces of the robot that actually, you know, 3D printing is a great application uh, to do this because we can design them with, you know, uh, stronger uh, structural um, design in mind uh, or, you know, different kind of uh, parts that can, instead of, you know, injection molding, you have to do multiple parts and combine them. We can yes. just print them in one shot. And so that's, you know, really uh, opened up a whole new uh, playing field for us. And for other manufacturing methods like injection molding and others, you generally want to do that for fairly large quantities, right? I mean, it's expensive to set up. It's cheap to run once it's yeah. set up, but your dyes might be tens of thousands of dollars in some cases, yeah. correct? Yeah, absolutely. And you get locked in. You get locked in for, you know, another 10,000 robots before you can do any changes to it, right? Uh, but for us, uh, we can manufacture at a volume of, say, 10 uh, for our customer. And so you just want, you know, you just need 10 to test out the market and see how well it works, right? Uh, you don't need 10,000 in the beginning. And we work with the customer, we'll grow with them uh, to develop this fleet of robots that really customly uh, fit into what the customer needs, right? Um, so that's the beauty of it. I love that. That's kind of a minimum viable product scenario there because, I mean, like, you you think you want to throw a robot at a problem. You think that might be a good solution, but you definitely don't want to invest millions of dollars <laughs> in inventing Absolutely. your own robots or hiring somebody to build your robots for you. You want to be able to test it with, you know, 10000 or twenty or $30,000. And uh, mm -hmm. I assume that your platform allows that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we believe that one of the big roadblocks for mass adoption is the cost versus the value, right? And so, you know, um, anyone who wants to deploy robots need to have enough value for the cost of robots. Mm -hmm. And so for value, uh, therefore it's in the details, right? Sometimes, you know, maybe it's a 10% that <laughs> you need to change a robot to really make it work for your factory. And, you know, other people wouldn't be able to provide that, but we can because of the way that we, you know, uh, design and, and build our robot. And then on the cost size, right, uh, we can we just, you know, really try to make it affordable uh, with all of these. 
And so that's how we believe we can, you know, roll this out. Let's talk about what's possible. Um, who do you ship robots to and, and what kinds of robots do you ship? Um, so it's been really interesting. Um, since the pandemic, we have seen an explosion of new use cases. Uh, people are very creative in terms of, you know, how they want to uh, deploy, apply their robots um, in their businesses. Uh, we have seen our robots being used for virtual tourism, uh, basically allowing people to travel again, you know, without flying. Uh, <laughs> it's fascinating. Um, so you can dial into a robot in Paris to go shopping and then boom, you know, uh, after you're done shopping, you can dial into a robot in New York uh, to check out the art gallery and then go see your parents in, you know, uh, Silicon Valley or Tokyo. Uh, so it's fascinating what people can do. Um, we have seen a lot of uh, application in uh, healthcare and education, mm -hmm. uh, especially for remote learning. Uh, you, know, you know, kids are stuck at home, right? So now they can actually go to classes uh, through the robot, you know, spending time with their friends. Um, industrial use cases is actually uh, picking up very nicely. People are using a robot to dive into a manufacturing floor um, to provide remote support, remote training, uh, inspection. Um, and uh, one interesting recent use case that we've been exploring with is uh, UV cleaning. So a team from Stanford and Target reached out to us, uh, wanted us to build a robot for them that can use UV component uh, to clean commonly high touch surfaces. Mm -hmm. um, and we managed to do that uh, just within one month uh, from you know, the time we talked to them to like we had something to like demo. Uh, you know, that's incredible speed uh, that we're talking yeah. about rather yeah. than years like the tra traditional approach. Right? Is is that typical? Is a month, you know, from, hey, I need a robot for X to, wow, I have a robot for X. Is that typically a month? And how does that time frame compare to somebody who has to like build it uh, a traditional way? Yeah, traditionally uh, approach would take, you know, two to three years, tens of million uh, to get to the market with a robot. And so uh, with our approach, because we have all the building blocks, right? Sort of, you know, we just like combine them uh, together with our printers, <laughs> mm -hmm. with our 3D printing technology. And so it allows us to operate a lot faster. Um, you know, we're looking at three to six months um, and under a million, you know, to, to get to the market with a new type of robot. And so this is the speed that, you know, yeah, uh, unheard of before. Interesting. Interesting. What are the parameters? Like what are the capabilities? Uh, what are the, on the hardware side, what are the, the big things that you can sort of piece together like Lego bricks to make something? And on the software side, what are the capabilities there? Yeah, we have uh, over 200 modules uh, that are spanning across hardware, software to cloud system. And on the hardware side, typically, you know, we'll, you have all the, the major components of a robot, right? You know, the uh, drivetrain, you know, the brain, the processing uh, component, uh, display unit, um, uh, audio unit, you know, those mm -hmm. kind of things. And then, uh, but, you know, they have variation, right? You know, if you need a more beefy robot, we have a stronger processing uh, component for you. Uh, yeah. But if not, you know, we'll stick with the, the, you know, weaker one so that it would save you cost, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on the software side, we have, um, you know, uh, teleoperation. Uh, we have a really good teleoperation stack, basically allowing you to control and remotely control the robot uh, mm -hmm. or the machine, right? Um, we have some big corporation that actually experimenting our technology stack to control um, remote excavator. Oh, wow. <laughs> to drive an excavator with our module. Uh, it's it's wow. fascinating. I cannot go into too much details, but uh, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, and then uh, autonomy, uh, that's a big mm -hmm. part of uh, our fleet, allowing the robots to basically you know, navigate, uh, moving around a space, mapping it out, uh, remembering the route that, you know, they, they need to take later. Um, yeah. Going forward, we have some really interesting um, services uh, in the pipeline, for example, mm -hmm. perception uh, for the robots to be recognizing different objects. Um, and then ARM. Uh, that's what we're really excited about, uh, allowing the, the robots to manipulate moving objects in, in the real world. Okay, very, very cool. So grippers and all kinds of different things like that, mm -hmm. wheels for getting around, put all the pieces together, figure out what you need. Um, how many variations of a robot can you design 
in your platform? Uh, so we have launched about 10 different robots so far uh, mm -hmm. within the span of, you know, two years and a half. And but so if you just... threw everything into a blender with all the different components <laughs> you have, uh, how many, how many can you create? It's limitless. It limits it. So, you know, you can, yeah, uh, it's just fascinating. And, you know, uh, when we need like to change certain model of, uh, of our robots, we just need to, you know, uh, send it the, the cat files to the printers and boom, the next day we have the, the, you know, a new variation that we can experiment in, uh, with. Right. And wow. so it's just, you know, yeah, the incredible speed. Um, wow. For us. So uh, do you focus on a couple of verticals? You mentioned quite a few telepresence use cases. And so there's a lot of verticals that telepresence could work in. Um, but, you know, what are you prioritizing over the next uh, little while for development in terms of, you know, capabilities and, and verticals you're targeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think UV cleaning is another uh, vertical that, you know, we're getting a, a lot of uh, interest and demand. And so that's you know one area that we'll be focusing on next, um, and then you know the autonomy uh, and you know the perception of robots really unlocking many different type of use cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so indoor delivery um, is actually really interesting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, bringing parcel from the lobby uh, to the yeah. the right office, right? You know, you have a hundred floor, you know, or seventy floor building. Uh, and it take a lot of effort to go up and down just to bring those mm -hmm. parcels. And so mm -hmm. that's, you know, a very well suited, uh, task for a robot. Um, and then security is also another area, um, indoor security robot then just roam around, uh, identify abnormal activities or, you know, people who shouldn't be there. And then the last one is sort of like the concierge, uh, receptionist use case, mm -hmm. um, especially for hospitals, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, office buildings. Uh, like, you know, U.S. has been doing very well with the vaccine rollout, right? Uh, but other countries, they're still struggling with the new yeah. surge of COVID. Um, and a lot of time when the patients comes in at the hospital, um, the receptionists uh, don't know whether, you know, they should put them in like a special lane or, you know, uh, or like just like let them breathe through, right? And so a robot will actually reducing uh, contamination uh, risk uh, okay. at that uh, Okay. Wow. So speculate a little bit for me, you know, I don't know, five, 10 years out, I come to Omni Labs and uh, can I design pretty much anything I can think of? You know, I want a wheeled robot. Actually, I want a flying drone. You know, I need this level of perception ability. I need autonomy in 3D space or I don't. I need the ability to synthesize speech or at least, you know, uh, to, to speak to somebody. And I need a gripper or something like that. I can, you know, load this drone up and, and design whatever I want. Is that, what, is that the future you envision? Uh, yes, absolutely. I think five to 10 years is a bit uh, uh, short to, <laughs> to spend a cost, you know, <laughs> drones on, and uh, <laughs> yeah, indoor robots. Right? <laughs> um, but what we want to really do is to, uh, you know, democratize robotic technology, mm -hmm. right? Basically open it up so that many people can work together, can build different types of robots, sort of like driving the ubiquity of robots in this world and, and bringing value, right, uh, to the user. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than just us building robots, we want to build an ecosystem that can use our modular platform, right? And, you know, can, you can build your own uh, flavor of robots for your own customers. Uh, uh, why not? Maybe. Right. That's how we can really drive yeah, like the uh, innovation, the new types of robots in this world to make, you know, to bring value to everyone. Interesting. So it's kind of, uh, it's not Intel inside, it's Omni Labs inside and you design and build whatever you want. You deploy your fleet. There you go. Anybody can come to you, not just end users, but also people who want to customize a robot and then resell Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll be the, the engine powering your robot company. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Well, Tuck, thank you so much for your time. Uh, very cool what you're working on and look forward to learning more as you uh, build it. Yeah. Thank you for having me.